All right, this is to go over the circuit grids that you received in class. We did some of these together, but I'm going to go ahead and um, do the rest of them as well now. So, um, we have a total voltage of 12 volts off of our diagram. Now I'm just going to go ahead and write the power, the ohm resistance values over here as well so that I can keep track of them. So 6 ohms and 3 ohms. Alright. So what I need to realize is that I can find my total resistance by doing um, R1 and R or R2 and 3 are in parallel with each other. So I could do 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 and take the inverse of that. When I do that, I'm going to get an answer of 1 over 8 plus 1 over 6. All inverse is going to give me 3.43 ohms. Okay. I'm then going to need to add that value. So if I go ahead and work this 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 inverse, I'm going to need to add that to R1 and R4. So I'm then going to add 3 and 4 <coughs> into those and come up with a total value of 10.43 ohms. Okay. Then to find total current, I'm going to use my V divided by R value, and I have my 12 volts divided by my 10.43 ohms, which I just found. So 12 divided by that answer in my calculator is going to give me 1.15 amps. And then to find the power, I'm just going to do my V times my I. So then I have my 12 volts multiplied by my 1.15 amps, and that's going to give me my 13.81 watts. Alright, so what do I know? As I go up here and I go about my current, my full current has to go through R4. So I'm going to write that current value 1.15 amps right there. So now I'll have to write the amps like I used to tell. So I'm going to just write 1.15. Okay? And then I'm going to have a junction right here. So that current's going to split up. I don't know what those currents are yet. But those currents are going to come back together here. And I'm going to have the total current going through this one too. So I'm going to put 1.15 there as well. So I'm now going to be able to use those and come up with my V value. So my V should be my I times my R. So my 1.15 value multiplied by my 4 should give me 4.60 for that one. And then my 1.15 value multiplied by my 3 should give me 3.4 5 volts here. Well, because of my loop rule, that as I go through here, and I go through here, and I go through here, if I made this one over here an equivalent resistance now of that 3.43 ohms, then I know that the voltage total has to be the V through 1 plus the V drop through 2, 3 together, plus the voltage drop through 4. So if that's the case, I have my 12 volts minus my 4.6 volts minus my 3.45 volts, which should then give me my voltage for 2 and 3, which because they're in parallel will be the same. So when I do that, I end up with um, 3.95 volts here and 3.95 volts here. Now I can find my I value by doing V divided by R. So I can take that 3.95 and divide it by 8 and come up with 0.49 and do the same thing 
but divided by 6 and come up with 0 0.66. Now those two added up should be 1.15, which they are. Now to find my power, I can again go back to my B times I, so I can just multiply. So I get my 1.15, multiply by 4.6, and get 5.29 here. 3.95 multiplied by 0.49 gives me my 1.94 there. And then my 0.66 multiplied by 3.95 gives me 2.61. And then 3.45 multiplied by 1.15 gives me 3.97. Okay, so that Three, the, all those added together should add up to your total. So all of these added should equal this, which it does. Alright, so that's one way to look at them, and that's the first one, which we did actually look at class, but this one um, took out a lot of them to kind of go through. Alright? Now the next one, I have my 18 volts, so I can automatically go 18 volts, and then I know that R1 is a series resistor, so I'm going to write 4 ohms right over here, and then I know that R2 is a 5 ohm resistor, R3 is a 3 ohm resistor, and those two are in series with each other, and then that is in parallel with R4, which is 12 volts, so 12 ohms. So, first thing I want to do is make this an equivalent resistor, which will now make this 8 ohms up here. So if I make this an equivalent resistor, it's going to 8 ohms. And then, if I do my parallel as an equivalent resistor, I'm going to do my 1 over R23 plus 1 over R4, all they give me is this power, and that's going to be, so it's going to be 1 over 8 plus 1 over 12, and then take the inverse of that answer, which is going to give me 4.8 ohms, and then I'm going to take that value and add it to my R1, which is going to give me 8.8 .8 ohms. That's going to be my total voltage, or total resistance. Then to find my current, I'm going to do my 18 volts, divided by my 8.8 .8 ohms, and come up with... ...2.05 amps. And then I can do my power by doing my V times my I. So that's going to be my 18 multiplied by that 2.05, which is going to give me 36.82 watts. Alright. So everybody should be okay with our total. Now, what we need to realize is that if we leave this, we get total current through R1. So total current was 2.05 amps. So I'll be able to find voltage by doing I times R. So that 2.05 multiplied by 4 gives me 8.18. Okay. Now that total voltage has to equal the V that goes through 1 plus the voltage drop of by 2, 3, 4 combined. Because the 2, 3 is together in one branch, and the 4 is in one branch, so that is a combined voltage that's going to be there. So I have my 18 minus my 8.18, and come up with a voltage that is, so my V, 2, 3, 4, is 9.82 volts. Now, the only one that's just parallel will be our R4. 
and our R4 is going to be our, uh, it's going to get that full voltage of 9.82. Now I can do the I value to be my V divided by my R, so I can say that my um, 9.82 divided by 12 is going to give me a current in this one of 0 0.82. Okay. Now the thing to realize is that our I value, our I total, has to be our I that is in 2, 3 plus our I that is in 4. So since I have 4 and I know my total, I can find that by say 2.05 amps minus my 0 0.82 amps. I come up with my current that's in 2 and 3 because they're here. So 2.05 minus this 8 or 0.82 would give me 1.23 and 1.23 okay because they get the same because they're in series with each other and then I could go back and find my voltage again. So I could say that multiplied by my 5 gives me 6.16 and that 1.23 multiplied by 3 is going to give me 3.70. Those two added together should come up to the 9.82-ish value. They do sort of, there's some grounding issues, but that's... It's 9.85, which is close. So those values should be the same voltage, which they are. Again, it's rounding. So then we will do our powers by doing P equals P times I. So we'll do our 8.18. 8.18 multiplied by 2.05 equals your 16.77. And then we have Our 6.16 multiplied by 1.23 equals our 7.58. And then we have our 3.7 times our 1.23 equals 4.55. And then we have 9.82 multiplied by 0.82 equals 8.05. And again, adding all those together gives me about 36.95, a little bit higher, but again, that's a rounding issue. So that's a double check. So that would be our second one, okay? Got the attention to those things.